would you would we be right to qualify this film as a Mozambican film? Not only right, this is like the first Mozambican independently produced film since independence, actually since ever, because before independence there was also no Mozambican cinema. All films that have been produced in Mozambique have been always co-productions with uh, European money, funds and even equipment and technicians. Uh, but this film was all produced with Mozambican money, Mozambican technicians, Mozambican equipment. Everything was Mozambican. So this is, I can say, the real first Mozambican feature film. Yeah. Was it a matter of ideology or was it by default? Well, it was for many reasons, but one of our main reasons is that we really wanted to be the first ones to make a real Mozambican film. Uh, not that the other films are not Mozambican, but they're not as Mozambican as this one. Because all the other films you can say that they are co-productions. So when you say a co-production, that means already that it's not 100% Mozambican. Uh, this one is no co-production. So it is our film. But we also wanted to make it like that because like that we have a hundred percent control of telling the story, of making the film, of producing it, of what we want to do with it, with it after. So, yeah, by default it ends up being our film. Thank you for your response. And uh, you made an interesting uh, remark about the reaction of the audience when the film was screened in Mozambique and mm -hmm. when it's screened here. What, what is the difference? I mean, how from the reaction? Okay, the so the film uh, was released uh, in the cinemas in Mozambique, in four cinemas, and there's only four cinemas. So it was released in all the cinemas in Mozambique, and it was in the cinema for seven weeks. And during those seven weeks, we went to many projections. Actually, we went to the endings of the projections because we wanted to hear what the reactions of the people were. In the beginning, we actually sat through a lot of the, the film in, in total to see and listen to the, the reactions during the film. And you could hear people reacting to many parts and usually the same parts in the whole film. But the, the, the reaction that brought us the most gratification was at the end of the film, at least all the times that I went and nobody knew I was there because we would come in at the end of the film, we knew exactly when it was going to finish. We would come in for the last five minutes and would wait. And as soon as the film finished, everybody used to clap, which is not a normal situation in cinemas for people to clap at the end of a film. They usually clap at the end of a concert or, or you know, but not a film. So it was, it was really emotional for us to, to hear that. And here, the people, I don't think they even know that they can clap at the end of a film if they like it. It's a yeah. Context. Okay, thank you very much. And then now, uh, in the film itself, uh, the Bruno, the, the main character, the protagonist, actually wears, at the very beginning, a uh, Samura Machel t shirt. Uh, of course, the name Samura Machel for many people is synonymous to Mozambique. And uh, this was not, of course, a film about Samura Machel, but um, what was the the rationale behind bringing this iconography of Samura Machel in the film? Not only Samura Machel, also you see the image of Che Guevara as tattoo, and so these uh, images of revolutionaries. Uh, what is the role that it plays in your film? Well, it wasn't just one role. Uh, there were various reasons to bring in those characters, but Samora Michelle in particular. Um, firstly, he's our hero. Uh, he represents a utopia that never, was ha never happened in Mozambique, that was planned and that was imagined, but it was killed, it was cut off. And it was something that we always it's, it is something that we still look back and think, what if Samara hadn't been killed? We don't know what would happen, but from his way, his way of being, 
we think that Mozambique could have been in a different position than it is now. Uh, that's one reason that we wanted to his his image to be remembered. It's the same thing with Cher. Cher is also an image of revolution, and it's an image that everybody in in the in the left or <laughs> want wants to remember. Um, but there's also other reasons. The, the photograph that we used on the t-shirt, it's actually taken by my mother. So it was also a uh, homage to my mother, an homage to Samora, an homage to my mother, a thank you to my mother who also helped a lot with making the movie and giving lots of ideas and opinions and helping do this, do that, don't do this, do that. Um, so Samora Michelle, that's how he came into the film. It doesn't have, it, it doesn't have a, a, during the film, it's not about Samora. It was just that we wanted to show his image in our first film. Yes, thank you. And, and also I want to acknowledge the fact that you come from a very, from a family with a background, you know, uh, in, uh, in not only film, but also uh, cultural production. And you are, you are your father, also an architect and, uh, and your mother also a very serious um, photographer. Photographer also, so so that's quite interesting. You mm. know. Um, so just let's just continue with the what if um, with, in, in, with you know in, with regards to the story of Samora and the vision and the utopia that he presented. In the film, we discover that there's a connection between Mozambique and South Africa. Uh, Bruno and and his wife had lived there, mm -hmm. and his wife asked him why should why wouldn't we go back? Things are not moving here. And Bruno says that we had problems there with immigration. Mm -hmm. And looking at that within the context of what has happened in South Africa, xenophobia against... Not only in South Africa, I think in the world, yeah. uh, where immigrants are no longer welcome. And uh, not just in South Africa, but in America, even in Europe. Uh, less and less immigrants are allowed to enter and there's all, all this problem with all the immigrants leaving Africa coming to Europe through Italy and it's, it's a global problem and uh, he, we wanted to just show a bit of that so he already had lived in South Africa with his girlfriend Mia and he had felt the problems that that, that existed as being, uh, by being a, an immigrant there. And he didn't want to feel that again. He, he, in his view, he, he wanted to try and succeed in life in his own country, not immigrating. So that was the, the reason between them. Very interesting. Yeah. At the very political or macroeconomic level, uh, your film also is quite pertinent uh, because of the fact that uh, We've had a media representation of uh, Mozambique mm -hmm. as also a destination of even immigrants from Portugal uh, coming to Mozambique, mm -hmm. uh, which is quite unusual. Uh, so, and, and we also know that there's a kind of like real estate boom in the country. There was. There was. There okay. was. So during a few years, in, uh, the, the late 2000s and 2010, 11, Mozambique was booming and things were actually looking up and for that reason there was an immigration from Europe to Mozambique. There was suddenly a lot of Portuguese, basically Portuguese and, and Brazilians because there was a lot of new businesses happening. But a few years later there was a big scandal that exploded with this big uh, debt uh, it was a fraud, and and all that that made our economy go down the drain. And suddenly, all the Portuguese also left because there was, suddenly there was no money. <laughs> uh, yeah, that and we kind of tell that story in our film, not directly, but through through our main character, where he, he also like our country that had a debt that we, none of us knew about and then suddenly we found out about this big debt that we, we have to pay 
Bruno comes out of prison, didn't know about the debt his mother has, had left him. And then suddenly he has to pay this debt. Yeah. So the country and Bruno were kind of in the same situation. That's quite interesting, yeah. the level of symbolism. Uh, yeah. And then uh, remaining with the character Bruno, uh, he is uh, uh, perceived in, it, in that film as a mulatto. 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 Yeah. And, and um, yeah, and that is, of course, can be explained by the colonial history of, mm -hmm. of, of, of Mozambique and Portugal. Portugal. Yeah. And uh, so with the character Bruno, uh, being a mulatto, and at some point we feel that that is a, an uncomfortable situation because he's referred to a bit derogatory, derogatory at some yeah. point by the boss and others. It it, it, that's, that's showing kind of a reality in Mozambique that uh, racism actually still exists. And now it's racism, a long time ago it was whites against blacks, now it's Blacks against whites, blacks against mulattoes, mulattoes, everybody. And it's a situation that's not nice because in reality we're all the same. We're just a different color. But we wanted to show that in the film so that people can really see that it, it exists and that it shouldn't because they're all, from the point of view of the film, they're all bandits. It doesn't matter if they're colored or mulattoes or blacks, or, they're all bandits. <laughs> They're not, the, the boss is not at all any good or better or worse because he's, he's Indian, you know, he's, he's a bandit like the other ones are bandits, so. And um, the, the film also uh, paints the situation of kidnapping that was as the exchange in the hall a few days ago when yeah. the film was screened uh, with a Mozambican in the, in the audience who asked the question and, and really said it was a reality, the yes. whole phenomenon of kidnapping. But I want to know whether uh, any particular group of people were targeted. Uh, were the Indians the main target? Yes, in the beginning, uh, when, the, when this phenomenon of kidnapping started, mainly it was Indians being kidnapped, because they're also the ones that had, have the most money. But the phenomenon didn't stay with the Indians. It, suddenly there was whites, and there was kids, and all kinds of people were being uh, kidnapped. In the beginning it was kidnapped, people being kidnapped for a lot of money, millions of dollars. But as time went on, the kidnapping started happening to lower class people, people with much less money, and, they, and values much, much lower were happening. Uh, so it became quite a, a big thing in Mozambique. And then it kind of stopped, but now, the last two, two, three, four months, it started again. So it's just a cycle, I think. It started again now with the rich people again. Okay. Yeah. Quite interesting. Yeah. Tragically interesting. Yeah. Um, also, when, when one looks at your film, um, <clears throat> we, we, we see that um, there is a particular representation of the woman or the girlfriend, being mm. the girlfriend or the wife at home. Not only in this film, but also in your shorter films, mm. Mahlia and Dina. The woman is always like the one taking care of the family, the, the child, while hus the husbands are most, mostly people with problems, could be drunkenness, could be drugs. Mm -hmm. Is that a, a picture of something? That's reality. That's uh, uh, the reality in Mozambique, and I think many many African countries and even other countries, from, not just from Africa, where the women are the ones that do most of the work, that do take care of the kids, that take care of the house, and keep, keep the, the family life in line. And the men, you know, work a bit and go and have a good time. And in my other films, in our other films, you, uh, you can see that the guy comes home and he beats his wife in Maitla. Not just in Maitla, in uh, most of the other films we did. It was all about women and uh, the relationship with how men are not great. Uh, no, knowing, that, knowing that it's, uh, as you say, it's not only particular to, to Mozambique, but a general, even a global phenomenon. Yes. Uh, but is the fact the war history, has it an impact in that kind of 
of socialization of violence I, in the, in the post-war? Post I don't know if, but I think so because it was the men that were in the army. But the women suffered a lot during the war. Uh, a lot of women were killed during the war and were killed by men. And then these men came back from the army and then, but, but let's remember, that war stopped a long time ago. That war stopped in 1993, 94. So it's been, I don't know, 20 something years, 26 years, 27 years. Um, so I, I don't know if we can lay blame on the war. I think it, we have to lay blame on education, on how, how, how the country is, how the country is run, on our politicians, that uh, their main objective is to make money for themselves and not to make the country better. You know. Thank you for that response. Yeah. And, um, again, linked to the fact that uh, Rescate is actually a Mozambican film, mm -hmm. and with the actors, the money, and the crew, and uh, you, you mostly had to do with actors and maybe actresses who were not who might not have had a pedigree in acting. So, yeah. And what what was your experience with that? Well, we 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 worked with quite a few different kind of people that ended up being our main characters. So we had the, a couple of them that had been people that had already made movies, but they all came from theater. Some others had only done theater, and so this was the first movie. And there were some people that had never done any theater or movies or anything, where they were completely green, uh, which is the case of the main actor, Bruno, and the boss. The boss is also somebody that never even imagined himself in a movie. Um, but. What we did was is that we had a lot of rehearsals. A lot of time before we went to the set and shot, we did a lot of rehearsals, we worked a lot with, with them, and we shaped them into what we wanted them to be, especially the, the ones that are not professional actors. But even with the professional actors and the theater actors, you know, theater, they have to scream for the last person at the back of the room to hear. So for film, you got a microphone very near. So you have to work with these people to tone them down, to get them to understand, to act in a different way. But luckily enough, everybody was very professional and everybody was really into making the best movie possible. And uh, I have to really thank all of the actors because they were all, they were all very, I don't know the word in English, but empeñado. They were committed. They were very committed, exactly. They were very committed to making the best movie possible. And they gave it all they could, yeah. Thank you very much. And, and just um, a tradish, more traditional question. Mm -hmm. um, would you define yourself as using, an, using your art uh, cinematography in this sense to make it a statement? Uh, is it a form of agency? Yes, uh, and in this movie we try to do it in a way that uh, by telling a gangster story kind of way, in a thriller story kind of way, but with a, with a lot of messages, hidden messages, that we hope people that watch the film and really concentrate in watching the film or who watches it twice will get more and more messages and who watches the third time will even get more messages. Uh, but what we're happy is that many people while watching it once already understand a lot and, and understand a lot of that. Our next film that we hope to make is I think is going to be even stronger. First we're going to have all the knowledge and of how to make a feature film, which is that was our first feature film. So we're going to bring all of that knowledge and make a better film, a better story, a stronger story. The next film is going to be about more about a, a woman, a girl, and not about a, a man. The main protagonist is going to be a girl. That's a yeah. Statement. Yeah. And uh, just 
one last one, which is more, you are not just a filmmaker and, uh, you know, director of photography, co-producer, but also, uh, producer, but also you carry a lot of actions, so cultural uh, projects on the ground. Mm. You, you hinted me about your project in Ilya, the Mozambique. Yeah. Can you bring So, uh, my mom lives on the Ilya de Mozambique, which is an island in the north of Mozambique kind of near Tanzania, nearer Tanzania than Maputo. Uh, it's a small island, it's about three and a half kilometers long by 500 meters wide. Uh, and about 14,000 people live in this small island. And because my mom is a photographer, she, she's already done a few books, photographic books about the island, and she really loves the island. Uh, she had an idea of making a, a knowledge center there. So we've built a knowledge center there where people can go and do workshops about art, about anything, about whatever they want to do. Uh, and it's a non-profit organization and it's there to help the people of the island. It was built in the middle of the poor neighborhood so it's for the people of the poor neighborhood, which are the majority of the island, actually. Or maybe of the 14,000, it's 13,000 that have lived there and 1,000 that don't live there. So it's ready for them. And we hope that, that it, it will help everybody learn and live a better life. Okay. Yeah. Will it be open? It's, it's already it's open. Be open, yeah. It's already open, yeah. I think we end here. Thank you okay. so much for your very brilliant answers right. to my questions. And we hope to have you here next time with your next, next film. film. Yeah. Thank you. And I hope the next feature film is much better than this one. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm already so critical about this film because I know the film too well. <laughs> yeah. For every object of art, even yeah. when we write books also, yeah. which is our domain, we also, yeah, it cannot yeah. be a perfect book. But I, th I hope that the, per the perfect film will be the last film we make. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Yeah.